Okay, so I wanted to chat with you because I had seen um, you post about protesting and I was just sort of like, wait, hold on, they're saving our lives and protesting. Um, what? So I wanted to chat with you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, you know, it goes without saying that um, healthcare is political at the end of the day, and access to healthcare is based on the structural determinants of health around us. It's a sad state of affairs that health workers are um, having to not only work on the front lines um, to support people and care for people who are sick and dying of COVID-19, but we actually are protesting here in Ontario. And for those who are, have joined and aren't aware, um, I joined a group of incredible colleagues this this past weekend to protest at Queen's Park. We joined um, Decent Work and Health, Health Providers Against Poverty, the Street Nurses Network for a pop-up protest um, to make our demands around uh, uh, an Ontario government that is not responding to science, not responding to uh, the evidence. And the people who are, you know, getting hurt the most are, you know, the communities that are actually uh, hardest hit, the most impacted communities as a result. So um, did you hear anything from protesting? Like, how does that work? You go, you show up, you make noise, and then you hope that someone listens, right? Yeah, so in a COVID-19 world, protesting looks a lot different. <laughs> and uh, it's mostly because actually, you know, get, you know, getting people together in that fashion, you have to be mm -hmm. very careful because you're making a statement, but you're not trying to put people at risk. It was distanced. Um, it was, you know, I met all the kind of health requirements that we we're talking about. Um, and it was short, it, but it was really effective. We had um, nearly 100 health workers come through. Um, we, we, we connected with media and we may, basically were asking for three demands that I think are, are are really relevant to today's conversation. Um, um, you know, I would say four. The first is that the Ontario government needs to respond to this pandemic using science and the evidence, and, and they're, they're certainly not doing so. And, and in addition, we asked for three major asks. The first um, uh, was the idea of paid sick leave. Mm -hmm. It has uh, become you know, apparent that the people who are getting hardest hit in this third wave are essential workers, racialized people often, people who live in low income areas, and they deserve paid sick leave. The second was um, the uh, ending of policing in public health. Policing is should not play a role in, in healthcare. It should not play a role in a pandemic. We cannot police our way out of this pandemic. And we were, you know, really strongly asking for that. And finally, the urgent reallocation of vaccines to hotspots mm -hmm. like Scarborough, like Peel, like other places, because um, these communities, um, they're not vaccine hesitant, they're vaccine confident, they just structurally lack access to the vaccine. And that's what's going on here. So it, I think um, something that we've been talking a lot about on our account is the difference between the paid sick leave that you're protesting for that we're advocating for, and whatever the Canadian government has put together. Because today, I think this morning, it was announced that the, the best new, best paid sick leave in North America would be a $500 top up of a federal program. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think even to take a step back, if you don't mind, Samantha, maybe it's like worthwhile just to even talk wh talk about why paid sick days is it, uh, an intervention that can help people. I mean, ultimately, the intervention that helps people is vac vaccines. And we, we will talk about that. And we are advocating for that, too. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, in a pandemic that is especially impacting workers and a significant proportion of the infections are happening in workplaces, the ability for workers to be able to make decisions to support their health is so key. What a lot of people don't realize or, you know, often take for granted, particularly if, if, if people have privilege, um, is that when people fall sick, um, a lot of people who work in production plants and factories, right. they don't have the luxury of taking a day off or a few hours off for a COVID test. They don't have the luxury of staying home just because there's a suspected outbreak that's, that's like not been declared or diagnosed yet, for example. And so paid sick days give people the flexibility at that nidus when the infection has just started, you know, mm -hmm. or the risk has started to stay home. And that's really key. Now, this, your second part of your question, Samantha, um, um, there is this federal program called CRS be included I encourage everyone to, to look it up um, and it does not meet the needs of workers 
in a pandemic. It does not pay out the right amount. It pays out in a way that's really slow. And so what we've been asking for is provincially legislated uh, paid sick days that are employment employer um, uh, operated and legislated. And mm-hmm. that's why we've been asking for it because people should not have to choose between their health and paying their p- bills in a pandemic. You know, healthcare is a human right, paid sick days are a human right, especially during COVID-19. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I feel like I missed saying this at the beginning, but thank you so much for protest- protesting on our behalf. Um, but I guess like the part that I'm sort of getting confused around, and I think young people in general sort of get a little bit confused around because the government is kind of intentionally confusing um, and difficult to navigate. You know, it seemed like there was some momentum around the idea of paid sick leave. And then we kind of woke up today to that news of not really paid sick leave. So do you know, do you have any insight? I know that's not where you work, but like, do you have any insight around why that's happening or why, you know, they're saying one thing, but doing what often feels like the opposite? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think people have to be really conscious of the fact that when people play politics with people's lives, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like when um, uh, politicians muddy the waters and confuse people. Because a lot of people will look at the headlines today and say, hey, they did something. Mm -hmm. And the devil is in the details. They didn't in fact, you know, when you look at what was said last week, we were promised the best paid sick leave program in North America. And what we actually got was nothing. It's not even mm-hmm. paid sick leave. It's not even provincially legislated paid sick days. And so the, the, the concept of topping up on a federal program will not help people who are dealing with a pandemic. It needs to be accessible. It needs to be permanent. It needs to be universal. It needs mm-hmm. to be something that is, um, you know, employer uh, operated and it, and it needs to be legislated urgently. I just, the other piece of this is like, it's not like we have time. Like this is an urgent manner, matter and we're not seeing a response in, an, in a proportionate, you know, um, urgent way. It's, it's bewildering really. So, I mean, like, where does this really leave us? Like what are, what are our next steps? Um, what are your next steps with the protest, but also for young people right now watching this, watching it later? Um, what, do, what would you sort of recommend we do? Like, what, what, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important to, as a first step, to really learn about the difference between the CRSB and paid sick days program, even taking a step back and zooming out, like, why is paid sick days something that, you know, people are advocating for? Why are all scientists and health experts asking about it and and advocating for it, you know, so learn about it, read about it. Once you you yourself are convinced, don't take my word for Mm -hmm. it, convince yourself. And once you're convinced, um, you know, we need you to get political. We need you to get active. I can see people are asking in the chat, we need you to contact your local MPP and we need to convert those 55 MPPs who voted against paid sick days to to convert in a way, in a fashion that is um, supportive of the kind of paid sick days that are gonna help people through COVID-19. Um, if, if you are living in a riding where your MPP is in support, great. Ask your MPP how you can support them to, to kind of flip that vote and make it work. A lot of you are, are in those areas in Ontario that where people, um, where the MPP voted against um, paid sick days, contact them, demand action, write, phone, I know that I've heard a lot of people who have reached out and haven't heard anything, you know, mm-hmm. tag them, tweet them, you know, the same rage that people felt when they shut down playgrounds for that weekend. I need that same rage around <laughs> paid sick days because a lot of essential workers don't have the, the time or the social currency of, to be able to advocate for themselves. That's why health workers are protesting. That's why scientists and health experts are speaking out um, on social media, in the media about how the government is not listening to the science and the evidence. And ultimately, who suffers? It, it's it's the people of Ontario. It's the workers. It's racialized communities, low income areas. And um, yeah, I can see some people talking about getting an automatic response. It's really unfortunate because what is government if you can't interact with them in times like this, right? I don't know. What do you think of that, Samantha? I I've been so frustrated about this. I've been really upset because I feel like their job is to represent our interests, and it often feels like. They're not listening. They're not paying attention. They're, when we co- connect with them, we're getting these sort of like BS responses that might have worked in back before the internet um, because you couldn't fact check it. You couldn't Google. You couldn't look for opinions. You couldn't check with experts. But we're doing all that work right now, especially millennials and Gen Z who grew up on the internet. 
So if we're fact checking you and we know what you're saying is BS, those lines don't work. They can't placate us anymore. They can't just give us a, but the CRSB exists. That's not, that's not enough. And I think that was really the inspiration behind creating um, the Flip the Script Canada sort of campaign um, was hearing, honestly, for me, was hearing um, that our healthcare providers are protesting, that, that there were promises made over the last two weeks that we're still not seeing now. And then just knowing that the, what we need to do is something different. And that's making those phone calls, taking the time to value all of our lives. And that's, um, that's sort of what launched, that's why the project sort of launched the Flip the Script camp, um, campaign. So if you, I mean, you can go straight to our link in bio and check it out. It, it's got a template for you. It has um, easy ways to contact your MPP, like figure out who they are, first of all, and then contact them. Um, and I looked up, like we, our team looked up all of the Twitter handles for the MPP uh, from the Conservative Party. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing we can do now to support not only our healthcare providers who are protesting on our behalf, but the very people who are allowing us to would have the sort of privilege to stay home. Um, Absolutely. And I, I, I want to commend the team at, you know, Owen Canada Project for everything that you guys have done, because I think sometimes in times like this, um, there's uh, sometimes a, 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 you know, inertia or fear of, of even getting political. But we have to remember COVID-19 is not an equal opportunity virus. It has had a disproportionate impact on people who live in poverty, racialized people, people who experience homelessness, our essential workers. And so um, if we don't get political in times like this, um, the only people who will suffer are those same populations. This is a, a, um, a situation in Ontario that is an international issue. Like, my my colleague, Dr. Warner, was on CNN. I was on Al Jazeera. Like, the world <laughs> is talking about the Ontario COVID-19 crisis in a way that, you know, maybe here in Canada, we were talking about the United States earlier. I know mm -hmm. a few of my American friends are actually on, and I'm, I'm just being honest. You know, it was, we were kind of on our high horse talking about how great our response was. And actually, we're now in this situation. And how did we get here? Because our governments didn't listen to the science. They didn't listen to the evidence. They didn't hear the narratives and the expert advice from health experts. And at the end of the day, it's not typically people who, who with privilege who will suffer. It's people who lack housing. It's people who have, who are essentially workers or precarious employment it's racialized people who suffer and so yeah get political and I, and, I, and I think you know that that is a, a great learned lesson for people it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. for people um, also because at the end of the day you know um, our health is equated to you know the the justice we derive in our communities now is a time to be just now is a time to stand up for what is right now it is time to stand up for our communities we need to do this together I totally agree. And I, and I, by the chat and by the hearts, it looks like people agree with that too. Um, I also want to know, cause something that we get a lot of sort of uh, thoughts on or questions on um, is around the fact that it looks like things are happening or it's like, but it's, and you sort of touched on that earlier where it, it's sort of performative in nature where it's, you're saying something and you, and it sounds like they've done something, but you have to take extra time out of your day to, discover that, wait, no, they did not do anything. Um, yeah, and that's why, you know, like you, Samantha, um, who, you know, you've spent so much time, you've really just changed your whole life to work on this issue of COVID-19 through this and other advocacy. You know, s similarly, me too. Like, I'm a palliative care doctor who provides health care for people experiencing homelessness. That's like right. my, my main, you know, work, um, or one of, the, one of the parts of my work. I've just dedicated all my communications now to COVID equity, because mm -hmm. if there was ever a time to speak out about anything, it's now. If I was really about health justice, this is the time to do it and and so I, I think I think what I would ask you know people who are watching this is to you know shift you know your focus it's, this is a once in a lifetime experience this is you know that what we're seeing in our hospitals it's like wartime like this is like we may not have a world war in our in our lifetimes but this is our this is our war this is our crisis event and we need everybody to step up so it it it, it, it hurts the the issue when our governments muddy the waters so I encourage you to you know follow on Canada project because I know Samantha and the team will keep you posted 
I definitely will. I like trying to cut through the garbage, cut through the sound, cut through the noise so that you get the, the core of what's really happening. I encourage you to check out Decent Work and Health on Twitter and Instagram. I encourage you to check out Health Providers Against Poverty. And basically anybody that Samantha and her team throws up on story or I throw up, you know, these are people who I really recommend to follow because you got to cut through that noise. And it, it is, it makes it hard to follow the issue. And that's the problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I guess that's why we're having this idea. You lot. That's why this discourse is so important. Yeah, and I think so. Um, the other thing is that a lot of people have messaged us and um, about how it's the government sometimes goes like Ford and his government sometimes goes like we didn't know, we didn't understand, as if as if everything wasn't available all this time, which it was, as if the experts haven't been saying this this entire time, and it's really unfair i think to us to hear that to hear them say we didn't know these things when we know that they knew it and they're just saying they're just lying yeah i mean i don't know if you guys can remember the friday april 16th um press conference that happened um <laughs> google is free <laughs> um true so i mean I, that was the press conference where we expected them to come out with a plan um and you know maybe paid sick days you know we mm -hmm. had field hospitals being built our hospitals were being are full you know um uh, uh, our science experts were saying this is a humanitarian catastrophe and they basically came out and announced nothing nothing right. that would actually help the people that are impacted by COVID-19. All they announced was more policing and enforcement mm -hmm. in our communities. And we know that policing is not an equal opportunity experience in Canada. Communities uh, where people of color live, um, where our essential workers live, have a long history of being over police. And at the end of the day, this was all they offered. And um, I keep thinking back to that time. And I think uh, like I went to bed angry. I woke up angry. Like I was super frustrated, wrote this like raging Instagram <laughs> post you can check it out i think it was probably posted on april 16th in the evening and um you know i have to say very few of those emotions are gone we are still mm -hmm. in the midst of this i'm hearing about racialized people all across ontario getting stopped by the police because yeah the police forces came out with these statements but our premier has not gone back out and walked the comments back to say no we're not doing a police thing you know they're, they essentially announced carding Right, which right. which is just is astounding because there's no evidence to support carding in a pandemic. You know what works in a pandemic? Paid sick days, paid time off <laughs> exactly. for vaccinations, reallocating vaccines to hotspots like Scarborough and Peel and other places. Follow the evidence, follow the science. This was all so preventable. We should have never ever been here to begin with, but here we are, the very people on the front lines who are fighting COVID-19, treating people and caring for them, or having to protest in our province's capital. It is just, it is absolutely bonkers. I can't believe it's come to this. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember April 16th because I also went to sleep super upset and I stayed in bed the whole day on the 17th, just unable to deal with the fact that in our darkest hour, our premier solution was policing. Like I yeah. just, that is so frustrating in any context, but after the summer that we had last year with what was going down with George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, it's extra unacceptable to even act like that's an option. Like there's no, there's no ignoring that information. And he continues to act like this is information that's new to him. And I don't get that. I don't understand how you can sit there and put politics over the people and your party over people. And I just, that doesn't make sense to me um, and I'm really hoping that there are more people out there, millennials and Gen Z, who are also outraged. And it's okay if you don't vote, if you don't, if you didn't, if you voted and it wasn't for your MPP, if you don't share the same beliefs as your elected official, like you don't have to have ever cared about this, any of this stuff before to get involved now. Um, we've tried to make it easy by putting together, I put up two template options. One's a little polite, one's a little bit more cutthroat. You can make your own choices um, and send them out to your elected officials. They're gonna give you bullshit responses. Just persevere, keep going, persist, because what they're doing is honestly gaslighting us and wasting our time because people are dying. And um, I'm hoping that people step up to support our healthcare providers and our essential workers right now by by doing the work so 
Yeah, you know, and everybody who's like shouting it out, shouting us out in the comments, thank you so much. We see you, we read it, we hear you, the hearts, like really feeling that right now. That's, um, you know, a lot of love for Samantha and her team at um, on Canada Project. But just for, so people understand the scale, like I, like I have never, I've always been doing health justice advocacy stuff, like, you know, for, for a long time, um, since I was a medical student, frankly. Um, and I have never seen this level of engagement from everybody in healthcare, PSWs, nurses, administrators, um, doctors, nurse practitioners, um, you know, policy people. Mm -hmm. I'm walking in the hospital and I'm hearing people just like grunting out, this should have never happened. Or like, you know, people in the elevator, like, why won't they just, you know, put in paid sick leave? these people wouldn't be in the ICU. I've just never, ever seen it this way. Everybody's doing health justice now. It's not like a specialty. And that's, right. it's on this level. And the other thing is, you know, I've literally seen people, um, you know, get sick and die because they didn't have access to paid sick days. And, you know, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, our premier came out and said that health workers like me were playing politics um, when we advocated for paid sick days and 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 it 's we don 't advocate for paid sick days because we 're playing politics we health healthcare workers we advocate for paid sick days because we care that 's right. it because just because we care because of the work because it 's what we should be doing and if that 's not at the forefront of this pandemic if that 's not what is driving our governments, then what is what is driving them to make decisions who is giving that that who 's who are they listening to? Who has their ear? Because it's not racialized communities. No. It's not health workers. It's not scientists, right? It's not, it's not, you know, experts. It's not a concerned community because 80, 70 to 80% of Ontarians support paid sick days. Who are they listening to? And it just, it just, it's so disturbing. They should be listening to us. They should be listening to pe the people emailing them, but they're clearly not. So I mean, I guess the only continued force, like steps forward is to keep sending those emails. If you sent one, send another. I actually scheduled a bunch on Google today so that they go out throughout the next couple of days without me having to manually put it in. 10 out of 10 recommend it. Um, just keep tweeting, keep emailing, keep getting, calling them, um, leave message, make them have to work to get through all these messages, all these tweets, all these phone calls and voice notes so that maybe they go, you know what, just to get these people to shut up, we'll put in paid sick leave. Um, and I'll take it. I mean, I don't need their motives at this point. I like just want to see it done. Um, but yeah, thank you. I mean, I feel like I'm so grateful to you, both as a health justice advocate, but also um, like before the pandemic, but also now during it. So thank you so much. Um, do you have any final maybe notes or comments for her? No, and the, and the respect is mutual. And um, I think, you know, some final thoughts. I'm just reading the chat. I'm so glad that people are pumped up is, um, you know, we can't, um, we can't let our governments gaslight us. We are onto them. People are too smart. Ontarians are too smart to be gaslighted, to be tricked, to be lied to. We know the evidence and we know the science. We know how um, you know our government should have acted, um, you know, and they didn't. And you know how we know because like we have like Twitter and Google, and we can see how <laughs> other countries have fared. And we should not be in the situation. We should all be hanging out like not on IG Live in person right now. Mm -hmm. But we're not there because they didn't follow the science. They didn't follow the evidence. And even when they got the evidence and were told that low income communities and racialized people and essential workers are going to be hit hardest, here are the solutions. They didn't take them. They didn't take paid sick days. They didn't promote pay, paid time off for vaccination. They didn't reallocate vaccines to hotspots. And you've seen the results. Again, don't ever take my word for it. Look at the news, do the research yourself. It's all factually out there. And finally, mm -hmm. instead of doing that, they announced more policing in a pandemic. We cannot police our way out of this pandemic. The way out of this pandemic is compassion. We yeah. have not seen a compassionate response and we need that and we need you. We need you to be loud and consistent. And we, you know, yelling really loud one day and then going silent the next day, that doesn't work. It's consistent. Advocacy is a consistent um, effort, which it requires serial mini steps and, and, and gestures every single day continuously. And, and we'll get there. And I, you know, it's not just paid sick days. There's a lot of other things we're advocating for, but this one just makes so much sense because it's so effective and it's so cost effective at the same time. Time. It's actually 
a, a conservative, you know, fiscally a conservative, you know, person's like dream because it actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, one single night in an ICU is $3,500 plus. Um, a single day of paid sick leave is like $114. Like, you know, we've, we've done the modeling. We've seen the estimates. It makes sense on multiple levels. That's why we're really pushing this hard. But don't forget reallocating vaccines to hotspots. And don't forget stopping this policing in this in this pandemic. Those are really the key kind of areas we're focusing on. And I want to thank you, Samantha, for having me on. Thank you all uh, for watching it's, um, and listening and everything that you guys do. Well, thank you so much. And um, if, just to wrap up, if, if you want to email your MPP, go to our link in bio. Um, everything you need is there. And we really appreciate you. Get your friends involved. Like, really get them. Like, call and bug them and uh, get them to do do the thing too so thank you and thanks so much Nahid thank you thank you so much guys take care of yourselves all right peace out stay safe everyone take care bye, bye.